Hi, my name's John Cordy, and I don't drink, and uh, I don't really do much else other than play guitar, but I do drive a Skoda, blue, um, and it does incredible miles to the gallon, and that's, that's a, about as much as you can ask for from a piece of junk like that. <clears throat> anyway, so in this video I wanted to talk about some of my favourite kind of gear of 2020, uh, give some honourable mentions to stuff, and maybe towards the end we might talk about things that I liked less than I was hoping to. A couple of cool guitars passed through my hands this year. In particular ones that stood out were Andy Manson's uh, hollow body Nautilus design, this Seth Backus's body outline, and uh, not his actual body, his guitar body obviously. And this was one of the lightest guitars I've ever played and unfortunately incredibly expensive so there's no way I'd ever be able to afford it but it was really cool to be able to play something like that. Also Tony lent me his PRS and I'm going to forget what the numbers are, but it's a, a slightly rarer one. Super nice body, super lightweight, uh, really nice to play. And I didn't play it too much because I didn't want to get too attached to it. Um, but sort of he's the reason that there's something else coming to the channel soon. Um, let me know if there's any things you want me to check out or you care about. Uh, maybe you don't even care about the gear demos at all. Um, but basically what I try to do is just follow literally the stuff that I'm interested in. So yeah, anyway, let's move on from those kind of honourable mentions. I guess also we should probably mention the Fender Champ that I played for the first time ever this year. Borrowed that off of Gary. The 1970-ish Vox AC30. That's the first time I've played an amp anywhere near that old. Also Gary's. And I had a Fender Princeton for a while. That's the first time I've played a Fender Princeton. I really liked it, but I've got other amps that can do that sort of thing, so that's kind of cool. So, in the intro, you saw me playing with the Mesa Boogie California Tweed. Uh, I think I got the amp this year. Really beautiful, kind of chimey, clean thing. Uh, quite spanky, um, quite mid-scooped as well, I'd describe it as. So, sort of Fender Deluxe reverb, maybe. I could be way off on that. Yeah, really like the amp. And this morning, I think you might have seen, I put up a video, kind of trying to coax some of those smaller amp tones out of it. But anyway, I'm really enjoying the amp, and I think I'm going to put this as my amp of the year. I can't really think of anything else that I would have put there. I tried the Karyotone uh, OTS this year. I've got a Mesa Boogie Mark III as well. Maybe that should have that should get an honourable mention for sure. So a very late edition, but Liana bought me this uh, Warus Audio Slow Reverb um, this year. This year? This week. Um, and super impressed with this pedal really like what it does. Clearly she knows that I'm a big fan of reverb because yeah this seems like a really cool reverb pedal. The only thing that I would change about it given the option would be to make it a stereo reverb so that I could put it like after an Iridium or the HX Stomp or whatever but it is what it is and that sounds beautiful going into the front of an amp or you could put that in the loop of an amp and uh, I really love it and I love the sustain and all that so that's jumped in a very late edition to the top of my list. Uh, I think I've got another thing from Morris Audio coming that I'm going to try out and maybe I'll like that too, maybe I won't like it as much, but really like this and I don't think I'll get rid of this one ever, probably. Next on the list, the Timmy version 3. Um, I've had Timmy's before, uh, two I think, sold them, but every time you plug in a Timmy I think you'll probably find it's quite a beautiful pedal to play. The version 3 I was particularly interested in because this switch here instead of being a clipping switch like on the normal Timmy's actually gives you a gain boost so you've got like a, a hot rodded Timmy if you like and so this is probably my favourite pedal that I got this year in a way. I don't use it loads but every time I use it it sounds beautiful. The Timmy is one of my favourite things on the Helix as well so I thought I'd put that in the video just to try and remind myself to play it more. This one's also a late edition, you might have seen some of the videos. I thought Initially I was just doing a video with this just to say that it was a free the tone rather than whatever. But as I've played with it I found that I really really dig it. It's kind of a tube screamer type thing but a little bit different. Um, but in terms of clones, this one for me I think probably tops my list of favourite clones at the moment. And does a, a really cool job of bringing like a tube screamer lead tone maybe with a bit more gain. And yeah, I think it sounds pretty sick for certain things. Um, so a fun late addition to the list. I might have got a dude at the end of 2019, but I bought another one for another board uh, this year. Obviously, 
I've not really done any gigs, so it didn't matter anyway. But the Dude has been a staple um, of mine now since I've played one, and I used a Dude stacked into an HRM for my lead tone on the Mark Kelly Marathon live session. And yeah, I just really love the way these pedals sound. I've got other more expensive Dumball overdrives, and I think they're slightly different, but I don't think they're better. And in particular, this treble knob is what makes this such a powerful pedal and basically you can get it to work with any amp certainly in a way that I've not really ever had any other pedal do uh, except maybe the Timmy because that's got a super powerful treble control as well but it works like a high cut rather than not cutting off presence so you can you know get things smooth even with a bright amp so the dude I don't think I'll ever be getting rid of one of those quite a late adopter but now I'm fully on board just a quick little mention for the Strymon Night Sky, which I was hoping would be quite a lot of fun, but actually I've got a little bit less fun out of it than I was hoping. Maybe I'll get something more out of it in 2021, or maybe I won't. We'll see. The guitars that I've most enjoyed and been most surprised by this year, Sire S7. That's going to be quite a shot there, isn't it? Probably. But anyway, this one, a £500 guitar that plays, for me, like... A way more expensive guitar and you might be able to see that the neck's quite pretty um, but the neck I think is probably one of the most important parts of guitar to get right and for me they've really nailed it and it feels beautiful looks beautiful the only slightly odd thing that I would mention about them I think the volume pot taper and the tone taper are a little bit strange but there's no reason that you can upgrade the electronics in these guitars and get something quite amazing for the money so 500 pound guitar that plays for me like a much more expensive instrument so i bought this one because i'd seen the reviews and demos and i wondered are they just blowing smoke or is it actually good and i found that it was really good let me know in the comments if you've had a different experience but for me i really like this guitar you'll have heard and seen me play the squire paranormal series cabernita telecaster the baritone um, this was my first ever baritone and I really really like the way that it makes you play It's sort of like playing with a capo, but a capo that takes you lower So this is not necessarily a particularly expensive guitar I think they're around 400 ish pounds if you can get one now. I bought this one back in Whenever it was uh, in the middle of lockdown and I find that every time you pick it up It sort of inspires you to do something a bit different to another guitar that definitely makes a list and I definitely recommend grabbing some sort of baritone instrument um, if you are into writing and that sort of stuff just because I think it can bring something different out. Anyway, so I think that about wraps it up. The Gibson ES-165 I grabbed this year. That for me, I think, has gone to the top of the list of my jazz guitars. It took me a while to get used to it, but I think if you pick very lightly with it, it, it does sound beautiful. Hopefully that's vaguely interesting. If you wanted to like and subscribe, you could. I'm just going to throw this idea out there and let me know in the comments if it's a stupid idea or not. But I know that there's some people potentially who might listen to this sort of stuff when they're driving and my channel or whatever. And I was wondering whether people want me to chuck up a no talking kind of version of the channel where it's literally just guitar and that sort of stuff. So you don't have to hear my voice and all that rubbish. Let me know in the comments if that's worthwhile. I will from time to time continue to put stuff up on Spotify occasionally. It would be fairly easy just to upload everything on a kind of no-talking playlist if that's something that people are interested in. Anyway, thank you for stopping by. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you've got your own kind of favourite bits of gear that you grabbed over the year. Or any bits that you didn't like that you might have tried because I'd said that I like them. I think the most used piece of gear that I've got is the HX Stomp or the Helix. But you already know that I love those so there's no point in including them. And also, yeah, cheers. Oh,